Welcome back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Chaotic Corp podcast. I'm your host, Tristan, and also I wasn't here for the past two episodes. Tristan's back. Uh, welcome yeah, back. Yeah, I'm back. Um, Should just make it a thing that I don't show up for the first episode <laughs> like we did last season. Just make it a thing. Uh, like, I'll just, I just announce don't... it every time you're not here. Oh, no, Tristan's not here. Tristan's not here. It's, oh, it's the beginning of a new season. Oh, <laughs> Tristan's not here. Um... This so episode. yeah, you go you go ahead and yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. This episode was really good. Um mm-hmm. you know, primarily speaking cuz we get to see Vader. <clears throat> we get to see him suit up and uh how everything really connects to him, like his pieces of see, armor and stuff. I'm going to be honest with you, that little piece of armor thing, I just feel like I don't know. What, I, what thing? It was weird. Which thing? Because, like, the, him suiting up, it felt like it was Legos. It <laughs> felt like it was just being, put, like, pressed on. Like, I don't know. I well, Something about think, it was off to me. Yeah, maybe you're right. I mean, um... I don't mean to be critical, but, like... No, you're right. You when, know? When we're seeing it in, in Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, it's, it's totally different from seeing it here. Because mm. they had to put him in the suit to keep him alive because he was dying right then and there. And then here he was just out of a back to tank. So they get him out of the back to tank while still holding yeah. oxygen um, to keep him alive. And then they put the suit on him, which then gives him oxygen. So, you know, he really can't be out of the back to tank without being hooked up to that suit. So, well, and plus he's he's got new limbs, you know, so... It's either that, you know, he walks around naked with robotic limbs, or he's got a suit on, you know what I mean? Just, just getting dressed up for the whole day. You know, right. Going to, going to towns and uh, killing people with the snap of your fingers. Um, but, you know. Um, so we do get to see Vader. Very cool. Very excited, as you can hear in my tone of my voice. Um we get to see some new mining planet it's it's like all about it all about star wars now is just like mining planets uh episode eight they were on a mining planet they were mining like crystals uh solo was on a mining planet don't remember what the castle uh what was that planet was it it wasn't castle Castle. was it castle it was called yeah it was castle okay um castle obi-wan kenobi has a mining planet i think I think the heist itself started on, like, Kessel. Like, that's what made it the Kessel. Like, the heist itself was called the Kessel Run. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I have I um, found out some lore to that. Um, mm-hmm. So, what it what, what that whole, like... Because I think right outside that the planet Kessel was, like, a giant, like, nether storm, basically. Mm-hmm. So, what that was, apparently, was a bunch of black holes just all like co- uh, collected around each other as we got to see uh with that giant space monster that got sucked in that was obviously a black hole but it was like a bunch of them so what it was was it was just stirring like space dust and like planet shards that's why they kept running into like basically like an asteroid field as soon as they got out of the directed course that they were supposed to go remember um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but then like the star destroyer, or uh, yeah, a, a star destroyer came through and was like, "All right, we gotta go through." So um, that whole area is supposedly keeping. Um, I don't know if she's canon or not, but it's like she might be. You ever heard of Abeloth? I have, yes. Yeah, so she's apparently in there, and that's what's keeping her like contained. Hmm. So. That was kind of cool to hear, but of course I, I I I'm pretty sure that is canon, but you know, unless you read like the Disney, books, you'd never you never know anymore. Right. I mean, they they pretty much like retconned. Is retcon the word? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they pretty much retconned as soon as they came into control of Star Wars, like most of the books. Like none of none of none of this stuff is real anymore. Right. Just, I mean, they were kind of just like, like fixing up their own all right. canon universe, so. Um, let's talk about the one thing you and I both disagree on. About? Is Reva. Oh, Reva. Yeah. I think she's annoying. So. And I'm not saying she's a bad character. I think she's just, I don't think she's very intimidating, in my, in my opinion. I do think that she's pretty annoying. Um, and I definitely, I definitely hope and feel like 
she might die in this show to Vader. Um, cause maybe she might like overstep her boundaries a little bit with Vader and think that she's like top shit. You know what I mean? Perhaps. Yeah. And I could see that happening. However, I just want to say this criticism right here. That's good. This whole, I saw this one thing on TikTok. It was Ewan McGregor saying that people were like tweeting and DMing, uh, the actors, uh, Moses and Graham. I did see that. Um, a bunch of like racist shit and a bunch of like really toxic shit and he said there's no room for he actually said no no room for racism in this whole world right. um so you know uh, not that we're in a position to tell anyone to like click off but if you ever did do that you say a bunch of racist shit to, to the actors you could just get the fuck out of here oh yeah uh number one uh number two um to disagree with your um criticism which if that gets mistranslated, I wasn't saying that you were racist. I was saying that your criticism is an example of how to criticize right, instead right. of not hating the actual person. The, itself oh, yeah. And, the and then, character. yeah, people take it too. Far. And then people and then people were saying the same thing about like Leia, like not racist, obviously. But like a lot of people are like, oh, Leia is annoying. Leia is this. Honestly, I feel like everything that like Leia has done so far, it makes sense for her character. Right. Um. You know, normally in in a show where, you know, the the debacle that we had on episode two, where she saw like Obi Wan's face and started running away. Normally, when that kind of like scene happens, I'm like, this is so annoying. This is like a huge setback. Mm -hmm. This doesn't make any sense. But for that scene in particular, I actually did enjoy, and I was like, that made sense for her to piece these little things together and think that he's a liar, and then uh, uh, sorry, run away. Right. Um. And a lot of people were saying, like, you know, I, I just don't see, I just don't see how people are saying that she's a bad actress. I think she's doing the role of Leia pretty well so far. Um, I agree too. Yeah, but anyway, to go on Reva, um, you know, just again disagreeing with your thing. I feel like she's like the embodiment of what Anakin was before turning into Vader, or on his way to turning into Vader, rather. Where she's very uh, stubborn, very ambitious. Um, insubordinate. Anakin was the exact same way during the uh, the Clone Wars and towards the end of the Clone Wars, or before the whole Clone Wars, really. Um, and if and, and someone else, someone else made I can't remember who on TikTok said this, but it said, but he said um, that it was like Obi Wan's past mistakes coming to bite him in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I kinda that's what I, I honestly honestly do. i will agree that she's not very intimidating but i she does get the point across to me you know right no it's, it's good that we have yeah. you know different views on the character yeah it's always good. yeah 100 because you you don't you don't want you don't want to like listen to a podcast where everyone's agreeing on everything you should have like some people disagreeing and exactly. you know other things there's different opinions that's why we have multiple people Right. And also, just be hella awkward to, to talk to nobody. <laughs> I mean, like, of course, we're talking to the listener, but like, what people don't realize until they actually like get on like a podcast or YouTube thing, you're just sitting there, and yes, you have listeners, but not in that current time. You're just sitting there watching a screen, trying to say stuff. I've done this plenty of times with like horror games, which is why I don't ever do them anymore. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, I have no personality, just. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a pain in the ass, but right. yeah, th those are the two main reasons why we do these in like groups and such, is so that we could have multiple different opinions. Someone else may know something that no one else knows. You know, so I feel like yeah, I'm hoping we disagree with more things here and there. Oh yeah, one thing that we yeah. definitely can agree is uh, agree on is uh, Vader being like oh. really scary. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he was just going around choking people for no, Dude. like, well, there was a reason, but, like, he right. was just, he's just like, alright, fuck you in particular. Just right. grab the dude's neck to the forest, like, oh. oh. Uh, and you snapped that, oh, bro, you snapped that dude's neck. He grabbed the one dude. That was sudden. family, like, through the window. He's like, don't even know right, yeah. <laughs> just come out the window. Oh, man. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, was it was walking, something, man. And then... Obi-Wan has got to be the biggest idiot. 
there's no reason for him to walk out of that right. house to confront Vader just so that they can get away. They can all get away through the tunnel. I mean, mm -hmm. like, forget about the people of the village. I'm sure he's not going to kill everybody, but, like... I, I, but even if he does, at the same time, like, your main... Your, your main priority is Leia. Like, not only as, like, Bail Organa's, like, friend, but also that it was your vow to hide these children from the Sith. Right. So... Um, I like how when he did step out of the house, Vader uh, used the Force to um, uncover these two people that were hiding behind some crates. And then you see Obi-Wan in the corner... Uh, looking at Vader, and then Vader immediately stops, and all of the music, the s suspenseful music, just stops, and it's dead silence. And he in instantly looks over, and Obi Wan, where he was standing, wasn't there anymore. And then he's just mm -hmm. like, and then you hear him breathe, and then he like walks in a different direction. Um, and then of course after he walks in a different direction, then you see like everyone behind him like start to like move around a little bit because he's just so intimidating like if you make the wrong step he'll kill you for whatever um right so even if you don't do anything he'll kill you like all <laughs> those like like the first dude he he like pulled through the window didn't do anything he's just like oh he was he's, he's, he's just like there. what's going on what's, what's happening we got we we got we got a criminal in the village right <laughs> snatches him up um, um yeah it was something it was it was it was a very good scene um and then later on as soon as he walks away Reva's still trying to uh i guess interfere because the fifth brother was like he told us not to interfere um i feel like maybe he should have just let her go just just kind of see where that went whether perhaps she... but like also does she have a personal see a lot of people were like speculating that she had like a personal grudge against obi-wan and i was like that. i i don't think that she I, I, before this episode i didn't think that she did i think she was just trying to gain uh vader's favor because so she knew who he was right um i don't think he knows but that with either. her with her being like overly like i want to get in there like i feel like she has something against obi-wan <sighs> at that point because if vader told you to not and and like to, to just not engage right. like the fifth brother said um and your goal is to win lord of vader's favor that you would just not do anything like you would just listen to him right so I, I feel like in in my opinion i feel like there might be some personal vendetta or something between reva and obi-wan i feel like now i do right anyway. I, I feel like that still may not be the case um i'm gonna go with my original theory that she does want to gain favor with darth vader um mm -hmm. by capturing obi-wan and she's I'll oh i do i do believe that it is her goal i just after that little action there i feel like she has another sub goal behind it but right. go on um i will agree with you saying that she's like a kind of like a young skywalker or young anakin skywalker more or less um very ambitious and quick to get to the the point i'll agree with you on that after watching this episode her in the town mm -hmm after the literal like biggest baddest sith at that time other than the emperor um probably in my opinion probably the scariest of the two um is like literally literally like less than 300 feet in front of you and his old master is on the same planet and in that same area he's focused on that and you don't want to break his focus from that or else he'll choke you out like he did that other guy but you know, uh, you know, her being very ambitious with that and trying to interfere or get like alongside Vader while trying to capture Obi Wan, kind of make gives me flashbacks to like Anakin's earlier days and his personality. So I, I will agree with you on that. Um, the um, the fight, I wouldn't say. I, I hope there's another fight. Oh, I, like this I, this fight this fight was good. It 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 was it was with. Um, it had like it had like emotions behind it. Like every time Vader said something, it had like a meaning behind it. Like he said, um, "You made me into this." Uh, yeah, Obi -Wan um, said, "Look what, what you become." Right, and then he said, "You, I am what you made me." And he was like, "I feel like, in my opinion, he was like, you chopped off on my limbs, bitch. What did you, what did you expect to happen? You threw me in fire." Right, <laughs> right. But it was a lot more angry than that, obviously um 
And then there was another point where he set those little, I, I don't know what they were, but they were flammable, set those on fire, and then dragged Omi Wan through it. He's like, your suffering has just begun. Huh. He's like, he's going to torture him. Um, he's, he, he's probably like held on to this grudge for the past 10 years. Like, he is out for, he's out for blood. I, kinda, I like the thing about like holding grudges. I like to think of Maul during the, the Clone Wars. When mm -hmm. they first found him, I think it was like season three when they found him, um, or maybe five. No, I want to say maybe three or four. But you know, he was like, you would, you do not know the thing. The lengths, I, the, yeah. Go ahead. The lengths that I've gone to just to stay alive. Right. My singular hatred for you. Right. Yeah. And how he had to survive on rats and stuff, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. using the force just to keep himself like together yeah from like you know and he survived away. almost purely off of the dark side of the force and he Ooh, fueled right. that with his hatred for obi-wan so that over time like made him go insane right um i actually don't know how many years that was but this was 10 years of, <clears throat> uh, well later. well okay think about this around episode one anakin was like what nine years old i want to say I heard from something, um, and now that I, I, I was thinking about it the other day, I don't really think that it's true anymore, but um, I like to think that, and and from what I've heard also, that um, Anakin Skywalker was Anakin Skywalker for 30 years of his life, and then Darth Vader for th an, another 30 years of his life. Whether or not well, how true that is, I really don't know. I, I, feel, like, I feel like that is accurate. But I'm not entirely sure. All right, episode okay, episode one where Anakin was nine years old, and it, when um, I don't know why I'm referring to that now because I have a timeline. Episode one when Maul was cut in half, that was 32 uh, BBY. 32 the, the BBY is before the Battle of Yavin. Right. And then so it counts down. I'm pretty sure the the Battle of Yavin happened in A New Hope. So. That made Vader like forty something. Anyway, um, Episode Two took place in um, twenty two BBY, which that was the start of the Clone Wars. So, if you want to do the simple math, there, that's a uh, ten ten years um, from there. So, Maul was surviving for at least ten years, and somewhere in the middle of the Clone Wars, that happened. And the Clone Wars, the original Clone Wars TV series, the 2003 version anyway, have, took place between 22 and 19 BBY. Uh, so according to that, that the Clone Wars raged on for three years. Um, the Star Wars the Clone Wars movie, Forces of Destiny. What the hell is even that? What? Forces of Destiny? Uh, yeah, it has Ahsoka in it. There's a screenshot of us. Oh, I'm just gonna skip it. Um, the Clone Wars TV series. It's the same. The same thing as 2003. Um, took place between 22 and 19 BBY. So three years. Clone Wars lasted for three years. Um, and of course, obviously, Revenge of the Sith took place in 19 BBY. So Maul was festering between like anywhere between 10 and 13 years. Okay. Um, which I don't think Maul happened at the tail end of the Clone Wars, except for, you know, of course, the very end. I mean, like, when he came back, I feel like that was, like, the midst. So let's give it a good 21, 20 BBY. Um, so, yeah, Maul was on that hatred for 10 to 12 years, the same as Anakin. Anakin was on that um, hatred for about 10 years himself, too. Um, do me a favor. Look up some stuff for me now that we're you're doing timelines um this is for you look up what uh so the clone that we saw and i didn't i didn't even address it uh, i should have but there was a clone in episode two which was really cool the previous episode um i'm pretty sure it was tamora morrison which was really cool if it was um it looked just like him but um yeah i i was pretty sure it was and, right. and according to my sources right here it was oh, okay so yeah there were um you know so that if if we saw a clone there and you know how old he was he looked pretty old 
But keep in mind, this is only like 10 years since the events of... Yeah, but they also have aged... Um, sorry, so they have enhanced aging. No, I understand that. That's why I'm trying to ask. If you remember, they did confirm that Rex was at the Battle of Endor. So... So take... Take like... He'd have to be old as shit. Yeah, so that's why I'm trying to wonder, like, how old was he during that? And Rebels. Rebel is not too far down the road from Kenobi. From the Kenobi. So... The well, Rebels yeah. TVs, let me see where that... Rebels takes place between 5 and 0 BBY. Okay. Um, so, so that's that, and he was pretty old in that. So um, what was the, the BBY of Kenobi show? The BBY of Kenobi show is roughly 10... 10? No, 9. 9 BBY, because okay. it'll take like another 9 years until Luke's journey starts. Um, so... What was I gonna say? Um, oh God! Why did they include the holiday special? Okay, let's just skip that. <laughs> so um, with that knowledge, so um, the Battle of Endor took place um, four years after that. So there was so Rex fought in the Clone Wars between he started at twenty two BBY. That makes twenty two years plus you. four, which is twenty six. That's 26 years from his service in the Clone Wars all the way up to the Battle of Endor. Wow. So I wonder, can you look up like how old Rex was during the Clone Wars? Do they give you that that age? I f um, are you talking about like his like clone age, like how yeah. much like he was just, like how much he was just supposed to be? Y yeah, roughly. How or or how fast? Hold on, first. Yeah, Let, how fast is, let's. Are aging? How fast is our agent? Um, let's do clone years to human years. Clone years. Imagine to... if like every like five months was a year for them. Years. Okay. So of course that doesn't exactly answer the question of how many. Sorry, how long clones are meant to live in Star Wars? So the closest answer is that, like natural uh, born human beings, a clone lifespan varies. Okay. So he, okay. So in order to fully sorry, in order to grow fully matured clones in half the time it takes um ordinary humans their cloners um modified the clones by implementing age acceleration until their development thus allowing the clones to reach adulthood in 10 years instead of two decades I so i wonder what adulthood to them is like 18 to 20 they said they said instead of two decades so they are yeah basically between 18 and 20 so basically from this sentence alone you could just do it as twice so they age twice as fast. So if, so say, I want to say Rex was probably like around eighty. No, no, no. Like I feel like he was in his like late twenties in the Clone Wars. Oh. Um, like you know, like physically. Anyway, his late twenties, um, which would make him about like say thirteen years, thirteen years old. Um, at that point. So you take thirteen years from twenty-two. Um, you add twenty-six. So that'll be at the bottom. The, the, the Battle of Endor. Um, 13 years plus 26 is 39. Is that right? 39? I think it's 39. <laughs> I have no idea. It sounds right. It's 39. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's 39. So, like, let's, re re let's estimate up to 40. Um, and he ages twice as fast. So that make him, like, 80 60, years old. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was about to say that. He would be 80 years old. Well, 78 if you really want to get into their original number crunch, but... Right. 80 years old, dude. Yeah, he was He's safe still fighting at 80 years old. Oh man. So what was that crazy. Made him? Well, what would you say like uh from rebels to 5 to 0 years. And then after that from from a new hope it was like what 9 years is that what you said? From from the events of the Kenobi show. No, no, no. Um, I'm talking about from a new hope. Is your 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 original question was from the kenobi show which is what that's what i said nine years oh, um okay. what are you asking about now well no what would the so like i'm just trying to think you know well i mean i guess we already figured it out he would have been like around 80 but i just didn't know how many years they were battling the empire from from four oh at five and six you know from the battle of empire. oh oh that was that was all in so between the battle of of Yavin and the Battle of Endor, that was only four years. Because the Battle of, Battle of Endor took place um, for ABY. 
after the Battle of Yavin. Uh, oh, I didn't. So hear I don't think. So I don't think the whole war happened. Sorry, like the war was still like going on before that. Um, there All was right. different acts of rebellion before that, but the events of um, A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi all happened in four years. Nice. And the Empire was only like reigning for twenty-four years. Yeah, twenty-four years. Yeah. So well, twenty-three maybe because Luke was technically nineteen, not twenty. So. Right. But yeah, looks between twenty-three and twenty-four years. Really weak ass Empire didn't <laughs> didn't last too long. <laughs> I'm just saying. Way. Damn. They really no, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. They really accomplished a lot within that time frame, though. Yeah, yeah, they they became, yeah, they they ruled a lot. Of they did, they did, but you know, whenever you're doing like genocide and shit like that, it's kind of, you know, right. Um, kind of put puts dampen on things. Right. It's, it's um, not fun for everybody. So, yeah. yes, the the entire fight scene was very, very good. Probably my favorite part. What was your favorite part of the, the whole this whole episode? Um, definitely the fight between them. I feel like it was very um, telling on like where they stood mm -hmm. um, as far as people and combatants. I'm hoping that there's going to be another fight where they're, you know, more evenly matched, maybe more evenly matched but if like there isn't i'm not really gonna right you're not gonna wreck on it you know i'm uh, not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna cry about it but like you know i don't think any any lightsaber duel will ever beat the um revenge of the sith duel yeah i i honestly that that's that's probably my favorite one and uh, you know between palpatine and yoda i liked it but i was like yeah i'm worth you right there i didn't think that one was all that yeah good. I mean, it was well. Technically, they're all one duel, and it's, 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 cinematography wise, they they played off of each other in, in a way. Right. Um, but the choreography just see, you can't really have much choreography when you have like a small, and it's not it's not like it's not well done, but you have a small CGI character the size of a toddler jumping around some dude and the dude's just waving his shit around right um you know like it's it's not it's not like it wasn't well done but the choreography between uh hayden christensen and um ewan mcgregor was just it it was phenomenal mm -hmm. and it was very emotional i just loved it that was hands down my favorite match of all time um this is this last fight that we just saw in this episode doesn't come close to that but i do like the lines in there because you could feel you could feel the fear and regret from um obi-wan and then Definitely. you could feel like all this all this pure hatred coming from uh vader right oh 100 you know um so I, that was probably him. right for 10 years right and i feel like that one line was just like you should have showed mercy by killing me back then instead of like remember when he said that like yeah you should have you should have killed me when you had the chance in, in one way i feel like that's a double meeting where it's like yeah now you're not gonna kill me i'm gonna mess you up um you had the power then you don't have the power now right. but um there was also another like i feel like another meaning to it where it was like oh you let me burn and shit like you you let me like slow cook Right. Like I was Thanksgiving turkey. Now, that shit was fucked up. You should have just killed me right then and there before any of that shit happened. Which also, um, which pisses me off even fucking more. Right, and that's more that's where right. that's that that's that's what I got from that line. Like it was a double meeting. Okay. Like yeah, like, like you that. you don't have the chance now, but you should have fucking done it. Right. I like that. That's that's what that's what I got from that. Like and of that. course they can't they can't say that word because it's disney right. but you know <laughs> they give disney uh, <laughs> a, a one-time pass it's a pg fuck you kid. i fuck got the I... <laughs> oh man uh what would vader's be in this episode what do you think i think it would be what you think it would if they had like one curse word you know an episode like do you think they would have used it for like vader's for vader yeah or for like obi-wan fuck you obi-wan i got the flames now fuck you oh, obi-wan Burn. 
Um, that was some pretty oh, hardcore dude. stuff. He was literally just dragging him through that through those flames. Oh yeah, yeah, that was. It was good. I, I could really, I really, I I was getting chills. I'm not gonna lie. I was because the fear that that uh, Ewan McGregor was showing. Um, it was real, into dude. His character's eyes was very real, and he was like stumbling because he hasn't trained in ten years. Him using the force the other day, or like a couple hours beforehand, was really like right. tiresome for him. Um, Vader wasn't even sp supposed to show up in this series. Hayden Christensen just came in with a suit and started setting shit on fire, and we just kept filming it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he was just like, "All right, just let it play." <laughs> yeah, just keep it rolling. Right keep down, keep it rolling. Down. You know, in the original, they they didn't put him in like the actual suit. Like, well, they did, but they didn't. What do you, in the original what? Because in the, in the original film, Revenge of the Sith, because he, they said that he was too small for it. Oh yeah, they put I didn't they put someone else in there. I didn't think it was there. There was there was um. Was it the same actor from episode for the four, five, and six? I feel like it might have been, but all I do know for sure it wasn't Hayden. Like Hayden, like of course you saw him like put the mask on, but that was basically it. Like it's the point where, now. well, yeah, but back then it wasn't. So, like any shot that you didn't see his actual like makeup face, it that wasn't Hayden. Right. I wonder if we're gonna see anything about Palpatine. I thought at first in the beginning of the episode, um, where we do, after we do see him suit up, um, and we get to see his castle for, like, maybe the second time in live action, mm -hmm. um, well, really in general, because I don't think we ever saw it in anything else. Um, well, there was the What If episode, then there was all the comics, then there was the Vader's Immortal and the VR. Well, that's, those are all those. I'm talking about, like, in the show. I really don't think we saw it in anything else. I mean, we might yeah. have seen. They might have showed us in Bad Batch, but I wouldn't know about that. But oh yeah, I need. I need to. Get, I need to watch that. Yeah, That's, yeah, season two apparently has been called. Dude, the Wookiee Jedi is alive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know his Woo! name, but like hell yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's That's the what same, I've been waiting for. The um, yeah. The same. The same Wookiee from that one episode where they're all gaining their crystals. And yeah. apparently, and I want to watch the Ahsoka trailer with you because um, at D23, or it wasn't even D23, it was like whatever thing uh, in Europe, um, right before the Kenobi show aired, it was um, some kind of event, Star Wars event, and I really don't remember the name because it's like the first time I like, heard of it. It was like this uh, Star Wars celebration yeah, but it was thing. Totally they they, they didn't. They did, yeah. I don't think they did a good job on advertising that because I only saw it on like TikTok. And you, but go on, me, right? But they they showed clips. Of course, people always try to sneak in stuff. But there are clips right. of the the Ahsoka trailer, um, and I'm not gonna go too much into it, but um, they do show the robot uh, or the droid. I should say robot, but they show the droid um, that from that lot from that the Cartoon Network show, The Clone Wars, the episode mm -hmm. where they are on that planet, um, which is actually turned, which actually was turned out to be Starkiller base, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Or oh, not. really? Yeah, Shit. Like, no joke. Mm -hmm. They they confirmed that that was Starkiller base, that they turned that planet where they got their their uh, kyber crystals from. They turned that planet into a, a Death Star too. How crazy is that? Also sad Weird. thing too, but I'm pretty sure there's other planets where they can get Kyber crystals. I mean, yeah, I think so. Be, but <clears throat> I guess we'll figure that out. Um, I don't know why the droid would be in the Ahsoka show, but it's only more interesting to me now. Um, hopefully the Wookiee survives. Um, hopefully. Hopefully, because I'm pretty sure Wookiees age differently too. I'm pretty sure Chewbacca was like at Chewbacca least 100 was, years. I think he was like 100 years old during like solo like i, I think I they like around 200 i thought oh i don't know but i know they made some comment about his age in that film right i know i knew it was a very least a century so right um but hopefully he survives and maybe we'll see him in the, the ahsoka show what by the by the time the ahsoka show comes out he'll be all grown up you know, yeah because then it would have been closer to the bad batch season two um when he was younger but um, but yeah no uh, so I did think that uh, 
whoever he was talking about, or whoever he was talking to at in his castle, I thought it was going to be Palpatine. But then I, I thought to myself, why would he need to be talking to Palpatine when literally um, the Emperor gave him this duty to handle the Inquisitor's stuff anyways? Um, at least that's from what I remember in the first episode of Rebels, if you remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which also kind of confuses me because if <clears throat> they made it sound like the very first meeting of the Inquisitors like of you know the the viewers watching meeting the inquisitors for the first time they made it seem like rebels was the first time that we ever seen inquisitors when really it was you know the kenobi show and then after that was the fallen order video game which was um which is getting a sequel by the way and yeah. survivor survivor it's kenobi right. and the solo should all be happening around the same year yeah yeah so five years um, ago was fallen order the first game mm -hmm. so that's pretty crazy to think um so i'm guessing they're they're are they confirming that fallen order and the sequel are canon i believe so if so then that's great if only they would make like a animated show or like a live action not maybe maybe not live action because that would just take a long time I feel like maybe they could just do with doing a animated series. I mean, I think, but um, I, I do want to talk about uh, one thing that they mentioned in here. Um, they mentioned the name Quinlan Voss. Um, they went to this oh yeah hideout. Um, Kenobi and Leia get on this transport ship. It's not really a ship. It's more like a truck, kind of. Um, with this mole rat <laughs> and <laughs> turns out he's uh, for the Empire and you know I was mentioning while we were watching that I bet you there are people that really do like the Empire and see nothing wrong with it um, so and and I did like because there was a little bit of a, a scene where um, the, tra the, the transport truck I'm just going to call it that um, was picking up a couple of troopers and the troopers knew the guy by his first name so I guess they really don't... It, I like it. I like that scene because it kind of shows like a different side to uh, the Stormtroopers. Mm. And, you know, though they are evil, not all of them treat everybody like trash. You know what I mean? Right. Because, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I guess it's more... It makes sense for, their, for them to treat their supporters, you know, put them up high and then treat the people, mm -hmm. obviously, that are neutral... You know, like, hey, get out of the way, stuff like this, you know. Um, but it, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of cool to see. Um, but then later down the road, we get to this little, like, uh, checkpoint. And they have to, you know, identification, basically. Um, and a bunch of troop, bunch of stormtroopers die. One guy gets cut in half. Um, Kenobi's just using his blaster so uncivilized of him so uncivilized right and then um one of the uh, a couple more troopers come back uh with Should have shot vader parry <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> uh, up close and personally just, just, probably just, just gets a whole like death like death machine just spinning it around up close and personally probably could have like gotten a torso shot or two you know maybe but like guns are not good for like close range knives are so you mean to tell me if you're like five feet from me and and you're just I'm telling you skilled, trained for okay yeah hear me out trained okay. skill yeah. for the lightsaber right mm -hmm. now if you're far away I can see how that would be bad because they'll either block it or redirect the blaster right back at you but I feel like if you're maybe like five feet away, you've got your lightsaber in one hand and your blaster in the other. Even if you don't have lightsaber in the one hand, you just like dodge okay. and hit. And if you're that close, they might not be able to deflect it that fast. Does that kind of make sense? I guess so, that's but great. that's 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 a that's a good way to get like disarmed in more than one way. I mean, you're not wrong. Like, oh, you got a blaster. You don't even have a whole hand. You're anymore. not wrong. Use your other hand, bitch. 
Someone just throws pocket sand at Vader. <laughs> Got a fucking helmet. Uh, um, throw it in his respirator. Oh, I no. I hate sand. You just hear him coughing. Sand killed him. Sand got in his lungs. Um. So so they get to the checkpoint. Mm -hmm. He's killing people with his blaster, and then a couple more come by along with the ca a captain, and or an officer. They call them officers with an officer, and then the officer. I I I kind of saw it coming, and I know you said you did too. That the officer, basically, she not basically she, the officer uh, kills, um, the other three. Um, stormtroopers, and I was instantly thinking, "I am the spy." I am the spy. <laughs> See, that's what I always thought was going to happen. Right. Like, I had like I had a feeling that that was going to happen. Right. Um, yeah. So, I couldn't piece together why. I'm going to be honest. Right. But... I mean, we we kind of found out later that she's kind of like, oh, of course, not like a freedom fighter, but she helps people. Mm -hmm. Um, and she just disguises herself. Very brave of her. She's. Though. She's basically that one guy with the vacuum cleaner shop and Breaking Bad, but he, she does it for free. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, she helps people, and then that's when um, they're in the the safe house. It's like a little room, and then it leads to a tunnel to the uh, spaceport where they're supposed to get off at and get smuggled onto a ship. Um, you know, of course, by the end of the episode, we see that the the pilot is dead. I thought it was gonna maybe be. So I thought they maybe they were gonna tease somebody, because um, they're always trying to do something like that. But it wasn't really anybody specific. It was just some dude. Um, but uh, you see all this writing on the wall, and one of them is Quinlan Voss. Uh, of course, I can't remember the quote that he wrote, but um, Obi Wan's like Quinlan yeah. was here, and I'm like, oh shit. They they remade Quinlan Voss canon. Well, yeah. it technically it was because of the Clone Wars. Yeah, because of the Clone Wars. But, but yeah, that's it was a great callback. Yeah. It really was. Um, I did find out that there is a Legends book that gives um, what it is is that um, they'll they'll have a bunch of characters like in background shots of certain mm -hmm. scenes. Of course, we saw Quinlan Voss in Episode One on Tatooine. Um, right yeah in the background and then it turns out um of course I remember most of the books were canon and then they decanonized them and turned them into legends i think mm -hmm. this was when this was canon that um either george lucas or some other writers that know george lucas you know getting approval from him like to do this type of stuff where they'll take like really obscene what's the word obscene is that a word? Obscene. They'll take uh, really obscene characters and like background shots, and give them a backstory and give them like in an important role, like they did with Quinlan Voss. Because in Episode One, he didn't have any, he wasn't anybody, you know. And then later, years later, they put him in the Clone Wars. They talk about him in the book, this and that, and now he's an important character that when people see him in Episode One, they're like, "Hey, there he is." So I, I think it was really cool. Um, apparently the book's like a really fun read, so I might might look into that. But um, so that was kind of cool. Uh, the episode kind of ends on a cliffhanger where you see Reva um, chasing she, after Leia. Yeah, she killed the pilot. She kind of you know while she was interfering, like she shouldn't have, she went into that little shop where that droid left. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how she found out the, about the tunnel and all. And and there there was this only me and you had this theory. I think we kind of agreed on it though. Um, someone etched in like the Jedi Order symbol, and she kind of looked at it. And the the theory is is that she was the little girl in the episode in episode one. Of that only that only makes sense because I don't I can't piece together why they would do that other than like to relive order 66 right i feel like we're gonna see that again and right. see like why she hates the jedi so much like what's the conclusion of what happened there right or she became an inquisitor and is looking to get close to vader to then end up killing him kind of like kylo with snoke 
in a certain sense you know so mm -hmm. i mean take it how you will I, I think any theory is a good theory at this point well all theories are good but you know um yeah most more more of them get shot down most than others mm -hmm. some get shot down more than others so but overall uh this was a very good episode it was um i think we're gonna wrap it up unless you had something else that you wanted to say no i think i'm pretty solid okay well yeah thank you for listening to episode three of Catacorps, uh, Obi Wan coverage of yeah, a review yeah. and breakdown of episode three of Kenobi. Um, mm -hmm. Tune in next week uh, for episode four. Um, we do stream from time to time on Twitch. You can follow Jordan here at um, Twitch.tv Twitch.tv slash Hot Pocket sixty one. You can follow me at uh, Twitch.tv slash Follow Your King. It's been a little bit. Um, I do stream time to time on the YouTube channel. It's just Chaotic Corp. So yeah, thank you, thank you guys for listening, and thank you to, um, to uh, looking into the uh, into the streams if you you know so choose to. Yeah. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Be back next week. See you next week.